Well, 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 look at this. A settled river behind me for the first time this winter. It's now the last week of the course fishing season. Sod's law, I know it, but we're into last knocking stage, but we've got a whole different set of conditions here on the seven to work with today. I'm downstream of Shrewsbury. The Welsh Bridge gauge is just under a metre. In these conditions today, I don't think pellet or boilie is going to be the one. It's dropped off a lot over the last week and it's now quite clear. I'm going to be fishing maggot and imitation maggot on the hook. So over the course of the video, I'll show you how I approach this, what my tactics are, and hopefully, if you can get out between now and the end of the season, you'll have a chance to potentially replicate these tactics yourself. And fingers crossed, it will do us for one or two barbel to finish the season on a high. Yep. Well, this rod's not been in long. We're away. I was just getting the downstream rod ready. You can just see it on the ground there. Not even a chance to get that in the water yet. Wow, just what we want, Matt. Nice, fast take. Let's just get down to this next ledge down. Wow, nice little sort of confidence booster that is, biting the first couple of minutes of the session. I haven't got the net in the right position yet. Schoolboy mistake there. Well, I thought the river looked good for it this morning. Air temperature is still quite chilly. It's probably only about six or seven degrees at the minute, but uh, hopefully we've got a barbel on here. Yeah, a little barbel, nothing huge, but that is a great start. Oh, three metre landing pole, net pole is definitely helpful here. Go on, mate, get in there. Yes, what a cracking start that is. Well, nothing beats an early bite on a session just to uh, get the confidence up. There we go. Come on, mate, calm yourself a sec, that's it. Yes. Nothing huge, but probably five and a half, maybe scraping six pounds, something like that. Terrific barbell to get the session started. Let's get this dude rested up. I'm gonna get that rod back out on the spot because hopefully this guy's got a few mates down there. Hopefully we can pick up one or two more. Got the line twisted around the end of the rod tip there. All right, let's get this rod back out on the spot. Got my marker on the far margin. Yeah, that's gone down nicely, that has. Got the Amiga two and a quarter pound test curve rods with me today. I'll pick these rods up just predominantly to use on the Trent. Normally use my one or three quarter pound barbel rods on the seven, 
conditions like this here today, those rods would be perfect, but just thought I'd come and give these rods a go, because it's unlikely I can get to the Trent before the end of the season. I've got a set of 4,000 size bait runners there, 12 pound barbell line. The seven's looking like a canal this morning. Very different to how it's been all winter so far. Typical, just as the season's coming to a close, we've got conditions that allow us to fish a lot more pegs on the river, but sod's law and all that. There'll be plenty of time in the summer. Terminal tackles, the normal standard stuff that I use. Bolt and run kit. It's a free running rig up and down the main line. Two ounce leads out there today. Barely any flow as you can see, so no issues holding bottom there. Just a couple of sticks as well. I've got the pod with me today. Just traveling nice and light. It is a fair old walk down the bank to get to this particular peg. So I just wanted to travel as light as I could. What a wonderful morning to be on the bank. So just repositioning the rod. I'll show you the setup I'm using. So Corum Combi Feeder. They come with these really handy end caps that got some, I think it's power gum. So you can fish them open-ended like that or fish them with the caps like that. So just loading this up with maggot. What you can do as well, if you want to slow down the flow of the maggot release from the feeder, just get some electrical tape and uh, just cover up half of the feeder. That's a really good tactic. And then the hook length uh, is probably two foot. And what I've got here, so size eight wide gape. Let's get rid of that blade of glass. So I've got three fake maggots on there. So they're imitation. They don't come off the hook, so there's no chance that the fish is going to ingest those. They are solid. I'm just pulling, as, I'm pulling reasonably hard on that there, and they're barely moving. And then on the end, I've got one live maggot there. So let's get this feeder loaded. It's just slid straight down the main line there. So let's get that back. Get this rod back out there. So red maggot. Just straight in the feeder, just like that. Very, very simple stuff. Cap on the end of the feeder, so that's loaded. Let's get this rod out. Second bite of the session. Yeah, this definitely feels like a barbel. Stripping a bit of line. Upstream rod doing the bite again. So it could well be we've got a few fish holding on the right hand side of the swim here that are just moving downstream, finding this rod first. So we'll deal with this fish first, get it in. But we'll definitely look at just inching the rods over a little bit in the swim.
This barbell's not far off being done. Come on, mate. Looks about the same size as the first one. Yes, in the net. Go on. Second barbell of the session. This one's probably about a similar size to the first. About five pound-ish, something like that, but yeah, all good. It's all about bites. Start of March, back end of the season. Just want to get some action on the rods. Two within the first 40 minutes of the session. That's great news. Just going to winch them rods a little bit further upstream, as I mentioned, whilst I was playing this fish. Let's get this one rested up and get after the next one. So, upstream rod back out on the spot. Just going to give the downstream rod probably about another five or ten minutes. Then what I'm going to do is bring that in for a refresh and I'm going to position that further upstream. Just swap two rods over. Just target section of river a bit further up. Just so I can try and understand and piece together where the fish are at. So we've got the same approach on both rods. Sorry, should have said that actually. Um, so it's all about just exploring the different sections of the river just to try and understand where the fish are holding up because this time of year when you've got water temperatures typically below 10 degrees you'll find that there's pockets of fish in certain areas and they won't move a great deal they certainly won't be you know charging up and down the river like they would in the summer so so winter very early spring fishing it's all about locating shoulder fish it's quite rare that this time of year you'll find barbel solitary barbel there'll always be the odd one or two but the vast majority of the fish particularly of this size you know when you're fishing for middle seven barbel five six seven pounds they're almost always together in a group so somewhere out there in front of us today you know we've had two bites there's going to be a group of fish out there and it's just about pinpointing exactly where they're at explore your swim and for me, when I'm fishing two rods, I want to be catching on both rods and I want both rods to have a chance of doing me a bite. So that's why I explore round, make sure I'm as accurate and as pinpoint as I can on where those fish are holding up out in the water in front of me, just to give me the best chance of when you get a good start to a session like this, when you pick up a couple of bites in the first hour. So I've got I've got another two or three hours that I can fish today. I want to try and convert this session from a couple of bites into five or six bites. And just getting both rods out in the right area is the key to doing that. So whilst we were getting that rod back out, repositioned, had this barbell resting down below us here, as you can see, ready to go. That's it. Nice fast hard kick out into the flow. I'm not taking my chances. This is very, very slippy down here, so not the most gracious of releases there. But the most important thing is ready to go. Whoa, bit of an edge to this wind this morning. But the most important thing is we're getting bites. So we'll put up with the wind and the temperature. So these imitation maggots I'm fishing today, I've had these soaking throughout the winter in the CKO liquid. CKO is what I use from Vortex. It's my favorite flavor of pellet and also cocoon boily and the liquid that I use to put in my mixes, I soak my imitation baits in that. And it's a little bit similar to what carp anglers do with uh, zig fishing, where they'll have their zig foam just in a liquid for a period of time before they, uh, they use it. So I'm doing the same with my imitation maggots. 
when they've been in the water for 15, 20 minutes and I bring the rig back in for a refresh and just to top up the feeder, I have a little smell of the, the imitation maggots and I can still smell the flavour 15 to 20 minutes after it's been in the water. So it's having some sort of impact. The barbell won't be moving around a great deal, but there'll be the visual element of the maggot in the water, wriggling around, moving, catching their attention. And also just by adding some flavour to your imitation maggots as well, you just bring another dynamic in with, with scent as well. So it's well worth doing in my opinion. I'm sure people will just be using them out of the packet and catching as well, but it might just do you one or two extra bites and it's just all about stacking the 1% in your favour. So that's the reason why I do it really. These rods have now been out for 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to get them both in now for a rechuck. I've probably done five or six rechucks now, so there's a good chance that if there's any active silvers in the area, there's probably enough maggot gone in now just to attract their attention. So we're probably going to be competing with small fish as well. So regular recasts, just keep feeding the swim is key today, just to make sure that we retain the barbel in the area and we keep getting the bites. Well, it's time to do another set of rechucks. So both rods at the same time. I'll start with the upstream rod. That live maggot has well and truly shrunk there. Let's get a fresh one on. Oh, the old fingers are cold. Let's make sure those imitation maggots are sat as I want them. That's it, all good. Let's load up the feeder. Okay, we are good to go. Right, upstream rod first then. So I've got my marker on the horizon, on the far bank. Perfect. Okay, downstream rod next. Let's keep tabs on that other rod whilst we're doing this. That's fresh maggot on the hook to load up this feeder. Well, the rain is starting to come down. Let's get the maggots under the chair here. I want to keep them dry. Some of you might be asking actually why I'm using imitation maggots rather than just live maggots. And uh, there's a good reason for that. So in winter right now, water temperature, probably six, seven degrees, something like that. 
it's, it's never going to get up to double figures. Live maggots, once they've been out in the swim for probably five, six, seven minutes, something like that, they're going to shrink quite a lot. And the best way to test it is just to fish two rods side by side, cast them out at the same time, give them probably 15 minutes out in the water, bring them in and just run a comparison side by side. That right hand rod is just nudging a little bit there. There's probably some small fish activity out there. Not enough to strike at that yet, but anyway, but back on there, back on topic. So um, yeah, imitation maggots, they retain their size, nice, bright, vivid. They stand out in the water. You're always guaranteed to be fishing as well. You know, if you have got some small, small silvers out there, like possibly what we have here, uh, that are, are meddling with your bait, then you're not going to get done. As I mentioned before, you can soak them just to get that extra bit of attraction in. And that's the reason really why I use imitation maggot. It's just all about stacking up the 1% in your favour. Just all those little edges that you can get that just give you a slightly better chance of catching. You know, they all contribute to different ways and means of putting fish on the bank. I'm sure loads of people just catch on imitation maggots straight out the packet, but that's just my mindset anyway. Just thought I'd share that with you. Might be a benefit, probably won't be, but... Thankfully that rain seems to have just held off a little bit now. So I've got too long today, so don't think I'm going to be uh, moving pegs today. Probably stick at this spot, keep feeding it. It's probably been about 30 to 40 minutes now since that second barbel. So we'll just keep doing the rechucks. Keep topping up that swim. Just make sure there's a regular flow of maggot down the line that we're targeting. So I've got both rods out on the same distance. So the upstream rod is feeding the line that the downstream rod's on. And it's really important when you're fishing naturals like this and you're doing regular casts, just make sure it's as accurate as possible. If you're not happy with where it lands, it's always best just to bring it straight back in, reload, get it back out, and just make sure it hits your preferred spot. Well, as you can probably tell from the appearance, it is bitterly cold. There's a savage wind blowing across these fields behind me here. It doesn't look like there's much looking at the surface, surface of the river in terms of wind, but yeah, it's, it's not pleasant. So I've got about half a pint of maggot left, something like that. So I'll probably give it about another 40 minutes or so just to see if we can turn up one last barbel. The upstream rod, I've just moved it further upstream just to try and explore a slightly different area for the last part of the session. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video and a uh, slightly different approach here to, to end the season away from uh, boiling and pellet. It's still been a decent uh, mornings on the bank, even though uh, the bites have dried up a little bit. That first hour of daylight was the one. That might have been when the feeding spell has taken place. Sometimes it can be like that in February, March. You know, there's only short, sharp spells where the barbel will tuck into whatever's available for them on the uh, bottom of the river. We'll stick at it for a little bit longer yet, as I just said, and uh, yeah, hopefully there's one more in it over the remainder of the session. Well, the rain started to come down again, and uh, I'm afraid to say it's a case of frozen angler stops play. I'm absolutely freezing, but I'm glad we've had a couple of barbel there to finish the season on the seven. 
hopefully there's been one or two hints and tips in the video for you on how to approach low and clear conditions like this when boiling and pellet might not be the best approach. I'm going to get myself back home warmed up. I'm off to Vale Park this afternoon to see the shrews. So hopefully three points for the Blues there. And uh, yeah, I'll be back again when the season reopens in June. But between now and then, there'll be some tench, roach and one or two other videos I'll bring you during the close season. Good luck with your own fishing. Thanks very much, everyone, for watching the videos. It's really appreciated. And I look forward to catching you again soon.